Hello friends, welcome to the CIA session by CapEd Solutions. CapEd Solutions is a premium learning partner for CIA qualification. The purpose of this session is to understand a very important concept for CIA and that concept is called independence and objectivity. When it comes to the independence and objectivity of auditor, that is not just a theoretical concept, but it is very, very important for us to understand for a practical aspects also. So let's try to understand what is the meaning of independence and objectivity. If we have to define the internal audit activity, the internal audit activity has three words to be there in the definition. So internal audit is an independent objective assurance and consulting activity. So in this particular session, except consulting, we shall be discussing what is the meaning of objectivity and what is the meaning of independence. Before we think about and discuss these concepts called independence and objectivity, let's try to understand a very, very important concept called corporate governance. In this particular session, we are just describing the corporate governance slightly in the briefer manner. We shall be discussing corporate governance once again in more detail in rest of the sessions. So, corporate governance is a concept which talks about the principles, rules, regulations, policies and procedures through which a corporate is being governed. The core of corporate governance is its transparency. How transparent an organization is, that's exactly what we call corporate governance. It's very important for auditor to be independent. And that is one of the very important element when the company's financial statements are true and fair or transparent. If auditor is not independent, if auditor will not use his objectivity, there is no way that company's financial statement may be shown true and fair picture. So, auditor is someone who has to give his opinion on the company's financial statement and related activities. So, let's try to understand what is the recommended uh, structure, hierarchies of the organization when it comes to corporate governance. So, the first person who comes on top in a corporate is called chairman. Chairman is the one who is charged with governance. The purpose of having chairman in the company that he sits on the top and he makes sure that the interest of stakeholders are being preserved. The company is not just being run for stockholder. The company is being run for stakeholders. So chairman generally do not participate in day-to-day -day operations. The task of chairman is to have an oversight role. Below chairman we have board of directors. In some companies, you may have one more layer called deputy chairman. So here we are not talking about that layer. We are just talking briefly the chairman who sits on top. Then we have a board of directors. This is the layer who actually runs the show. Then we have CEO. CEO is an operational person. The task of CEO is to run the company in efficient manner, profitable manner and take day-to-day -day decisions which are related to operations. Below CEO, he may have his own staff like CFO, CTO and other senior executives. So basically, this is a top hierarchies in the company. Transparency, objectivity, independence, all these things are more related to the top layer. So we are discussing that layer. Now we understand that chairman has more like an oversight role. We understood that CEO, chief executive officer is the one who is basically dealing with day-to-day -day operational matters. Corporate governance says that these two people should not be same. Ideally, if chairman and CEO will be a one person, they'll be biased. There'll be a lot of biasness in the organization. And that is where it's recommended that they should not be same. Now, let's discuss this layer, which is super important layer of the company. 
actually this is the layer who runs the business the board of directors ideally the auditors are appointed in shareholders meeting or agm but many times shareholders do not present in the agms so end of the day directors are the one who appoints the auditor and the auditor reports into the director back now how will independence and objectivity be maintained that is where there are two type of directors recommended by corporate governance executive directors non executive directors the executive director take decisions related to the company's operations strategies policies and so on nads are the one who are called independent director they do not participate in operational matter the purpose of nad is to keep an eye on executive director the major purpose of having nad that they have to maintain transparency in the system below nads there can be certain committees we call them audit committee we call them remuneration committee and we call them nomination committee audit committee as the name suggests is responsible for the audits of the company be it internal audit or be it external audit the person who heads audit committee called cae cae stands for chief audit executive ca is the one who is very important person in the company who coordinates with both internal as well as external auditor and he is the one who discuss the audit reports with the board audit committee reports to board via nads so basically now transparency is being maintained remuneration committee recommends how much should be the remuneration for executive director the executive director should not be overpaid or underpaid if they are overpaid they are misutilizing shareholders money if they are underpaid they will not have a motivation to work so in either case both under and over payment is bad for executive director remuneration committee decides as to what should be the ideal salary for this experience and this much skill set then comes nomination committee if a wrong person sits in the board let's say the family member of some directors or chairman will sit in the board not necessarily they may have a skill set to run the business and that's where it may be problematic for stakeholders so nomination committee recommends who should be nominated in the board what kind of skill set should be nominated in the board so this is how corporate governance work at this top level now since we have understood this particular thing now it will be much easier for us to understand this chart Now, if I talk about the chapter per se for examination point of view, this is a very very important topic for your CIA exam part one. There is no way that the question would not be asked from this chapter. So that means it's quite an important topic for our CIA part one paper. Let's try to understand these concept one by one. What we have to understand about CIA exam is. seems like a theory seems like an audit paper and when you go through those concept everything seems similar everything seems easier but when it comes to examination question the answers are too close that sometime you don't you may not be able to find out the correct one so that's where we need to understand the concept thoroughly when you understand the concept thoroughly it will be easier for you to decide in the examination so this is how we have to study this chapter called independence and objectivity the first thing which we start is called attribute standard 1100 what is independence it is not the case where that somebody is tying up the auditor or so that means independence here means more about mental independence independence is a situation when an auditor is free from those condition which hamper his objectivity or which hamper his independence anything which threatens his freedom it will be not covered under independence 
so as an goes without saying if auditor has to give his opinion freely he has to be independent so attribute standard 1100d with independence of auditor independence is something which is freedom from the conditions that threaten the ability to carry out the audit in unbiased manner so basically independence and objectivity goes hand in hand what is objectivity objectivity means unbiased there are two words which we need to understand subjectivity objectivity when you are subjective you use your imagination you use your opinions you are not fact based when you are objective you talk with facts so you are fact based evidence based for example if i say what is this your answer will be it's a pen it's an objective question if i say is this black pen beautiful now i am talking about a subjective question beautiful is a subjective term people may have their own imagination opinions about this so that is the difference between objectivity and subjectivity we as an auditor are not supposed to be subjective but objective so we talk with fact we talk with evidences so that's what we call independence and objectivity so anything which hampers our ability to carry out the work freely something where we are not independent the chief audit executive or cae has a direct or indirect access to senior management and board now let's go back to this what we just discussed if you see this picture again now this is cae and this is board so end of the day ceo has to report to board of director this is how it is now there can be two ways so this is board and here we have a cae there will be two reportings to the board one is called functional reporting in functional reporting cae directly reports into the board under administrative reporting the cae reports to board via ceo so i try to redraft it we have a board we have a ceo and we have cae chief audit executive when cae directly reports into the board we talk about functional reporting when cae reports to ceo and then board we talk about administrative reporting so the dual reporting is there in the company because company wants to be transparent so the major purpose of this dual reporting is to have objectivity if this will be there the auditor will be independent auditor will be objective now question arises as to what kind of things basically reports under functional reporting a reporting where ca directly reports into the board anything related to audit charter as to what will be the scope of the audit that will be covered under functional reporting anything which is related to ca's remuneration terms anything which is related to the scope or risk based audit all these are part of functional report so the major thing what auditor wants to discuss with board be it audit charter be it ca's terms and condition remuneration removals or risk based audit that is something where ca must have a direct access to the board many a time ceo comes into picture and he would like to change the audit report end of the day ceo is an operational person he would like to have a better profitability he would like to show a rosy picture in the company maybe a chances that he would pressurize the ca to change the reports but that's exactly where we have a functional reporting so that our auditor can be independent and he can be objective so as we understood and it's defined in attribute standard 1100 that objectivity is an unbiased man mental attitude to perform audit engagement and internal auditors do not subordinate their judgment on audit matters to others that means 
whenever auditors need to form their opinion they will be forming opinion freely they do not subordinate it to someone else threats to objectivity must be managed by auditor engagement functionals and organizational level so anything which hampers the auditor's work for example certain employees refuses to give information to the auditor or they will tell auditor to only have access to certain information and not to have access to certain information all these things needs to be discussed so auditor need to discuss this with the engagement client at the organizational level if at ceo level it is not working out then he has to go to the board and if not board then he has to go to charged with governance so this is how objectivity works so so far we have understood what is the hierarchies in the company we have understood the concept of independence and objectivity and we have covered one attribute standard called 1100 i would also suggest <clears throat> though rarely in cie exam they talk as to which attribute standard we are referring to but it is important for us to know this attribute standards because uh, it's good for us to understand the concepts and also uh, sometime if the question gives some reference of attribute standard then you would understand what question is all about so this is how we need to remember these concepts now we have attribute standard 1110 which says that organizational independence so here we are talking about something called functional reporting as we just discussed where it is directly reported to the board so it is a cae and the board that's a functional reporting so anything related to audit charter risk based audit cas remuneration terms of condition and so on all be covered under functional reporting. certain cases where the the ca reports to the board via ceo is called administrative reporting anything which is related to internal communication where auditor need certain information about day to day operations budgets and so on that will be covered under administrative reporting so in this case ca passes through ceo and that goes to board as it's more like a day to day operational things that is where it is this type of communication goes via ceo because ceo is the right person to talk about those matters so this is how dual reporting works in organization then comes interaction with the board now that is something which is also very important element of objectivity and independence how many time a ceo or ca should interact with the board so attribute standard 1110 says that ca should interact with the board on regular basis it can be annual private meeting also on annual basis but otherwise there has to be a constant interaction between ca and the board what's the need one that anything which can hamper their objectivity and independence can be discussed with the board also the nature of our work is internal audit so whatever is your feedback about the work what you have done needs to be discussed there is a difference between external audit and internal audit the external audit is more like a post mortem activity which happens after the work everything has been done and now you are checking it but it's not in the case of ia internal audit is something which is a constant ongoing thing if ca will not interact with the board one the board feedback cannot come and if anything which needs immediate attention or continuous attention it will not be able to discuss with the board so there has to be a regular interaction between the ca and the board then comes individual objectivity the objectivity unbiased attitude is required in terms of function of the audit and also in terms of auditor's individual capacity so now we are talking about individual objectivity which is covered under attribute standard 1120 anything which comes under conflict of interest needs to be reported what is conflict of interest 
whenever you are trying to take certain advantages which are adverse to your employer and it is hidden from the employer we call that conflict of interest two things which are very important for the conflict of interest one it should be adverse to the nature of the employer and also it needs to be hidden in the nature so now let me give you an example maybe you'll understand the concept of conflict of interest better let's say i am an auditor of company a while taking the assignment from a <clears throat> i did not know that a has any relationship with company b the company's b's head is my relative but as at the time of taking assignment of a i did not know this relationship i started audit of a while doing my audit i got to know this relationship what to do probably i am ethical enough not to be biased here but my professional standards tell me that i cannot get into conflict of interest so what i should do is immediately report it to the company as management i should discuss this with board or those charged with governance asap if i don't do it that means there is a conflict of interest even if you are 100% sure that this relationship between b's head and you will not hamper this audit activity then also you need to disclose this fact if you don't do it there is a conflict of interest so this is how our objectivity can be preserved so internal auditor should have an impartial unbiased attitude and they should avoid any kind of conflict of interest it exists even if no unethical or improper act result this is very important for us to understand that even if nothing is going to impact your audit work then also you are supposed to discuss it with the management of a so i hope by now we are clear about the concept of independence and objectivity then comes impairment to independence and objectivity there may be lot of situation lot of threats which impact our independence which impacts our objectivity and that's what we call impairment to independence and objectivity so that's covered under attribute standard 1130 if independence and objectivity is impaired what needs to be done needs to be disclosed as we just discussed in the example that whenever there is a threat we need to disclose it if you don't disclose it that means you never wanted it to be transparent and that's called conflict of interest it includes any kind of conflict of interest scope of limitation what is scope of limitation many a times after joining after taking assignment the ceo or management would put some limitation on the scope for example suppose you have to do stock audit for say 12 months now probably mid of the audit the management would say that we will not give you access of stock record for two months in between and that's called scope of limitation it needs to be immediately disclosed and discussed with the board or those who charge with the governance any restriction on access to the record for example me as a client i have closed one room and i would tell auditor that you cannot go inside that room you cannot check the stock inside that's something where i'm putting restriction on access of the record any personal or properties and funding etc everything needs to be disclosed so that is what we call impairment of independence whenever there is impairment of independence needs to be disclosed any kind of nature of disclosure depend on the materiality now this materiality is a very very important concept for audit materiality means significance how significant an item is called material anything which impacts the decision of user is called material Mater materiality does not always mean monetary 
even if it is small of value but it may impact the decision of user we call that material so materiality entirely decides as to what needs to be disclosed but still if you have any close relationship with the competitor or the vendors or the supplier it should be disclosed then comes auditors proficiency and professional care so this topic has three parts to be discussed the independence the objectivity and the due care so so far we discussed independence we discussed objectivity and now it's time for us to discuss auditors proficiency and due care as we already understood that as per code of ethics or code of conduct this nothing called negligence as a professional we can never be negligent we can never say we did not know we did not know how to do it or we thought so these are the words which has no place in the profession so in those cases auditor need to be proficient and need to be having absolute high professional care or what we call due care so attribute standard 1200 deals with that situation what is proficiency proficiency comes with knowledge skills and other competencies so when you are going for a cie exam today you are upgrading your skill set you are having knowledge of the course and gradually you will have experience also in the field so that makes you proficient attribute standard 1210 it says due professional care that means you cannot be negligent you have to have absolute high professional care while doing the work so skill expected at a reasonably prudent and a competent internal audit is required that's what we call auditor's proficiency and professional care how will you make sure that your proficiency is preserved what you are studying today in your curriculum of cia may not be relevant forever market is dynamic the situations are dynamic keeps changing so it is important for auditor to upgrade the knowledge and that's where we have something called continuous professional expertise cpe hours cpe hours is something which is mandatory for auditors to fulfill the only purpose of this is so that you can upgrade your knowledge whatever is happening in the market the new auditing standard the new kind of fraud risk everything needs to be updated that is why it is important for us to keep upgrading our knowledge with the cpe hours so ca must obtain a competent advice and assistance if the auditor lacks the knowledge skill and other competency ca is the one who's heading the audit committee so he has to make sure that auditors who are doing this work are competent enough they have proper skill set knowledge and efficiency to do the work at any point of time if ca believes that this is not happening what they should do is they need to take a advice they want that they need to bring it to the notice to the board and they need to take a proper advice as to how to deal with this situation attribute standard 1220 says that internal auditor must apply care and skill in the audit engagement the continuing professional development cpd cpe is one of the same thing which attribute standard 1230 deals with that auditor needs to stay informed with the developments what is happening in the market what kind of new risks have come up how to deal with that everything comes under continuing professional development then last but really not the least quality the audit is a very important activity inside the company so we have to make sure that quality is being preserved so quality assurance and improvement program attribute standard 1300 a ca should develop the quality assurance and improvement program he is the one who is responsible for the audit function and is to make sure that the quality is being preserved and maintained so ca should keep developing the quality the quality may come up with the skill set enhancement with the continuous cpd and trainings 
So quality assurance must include both internal and external assessments. How to report on the quality assurance? So CA must communicate the result of quality assurance with the senior management and the board. As we discussed before also, time to time CA should keep checking and then they need to discuss it with the management, with the people who are charged with the governance. And attribute standard 1321 says that CA may state that the internal audit activity confirmed with the international standard only if result of quality assessment supports it. So basically CA need to time to time check, keep checking the quality of the work and discuss it with the management unless and until he is sure that audit is being it's being followed or is using international auditing standards international standards of quality he should not say yes for it so he has to make sure that the audit work has good quality and it is as per international standards then comes disclosure of non conformance Whatever quality confirmance should be there, if it is not happening, then it's time for CA to disclose it. Disclose to whom? Again to the management, the, those who are charged with the governance. So attribute standard 1322 says, CA must disclose any kind of non-confirmance and its impact to the management. Then internal assessment and external assessment, how to be done? There has to be ongoing internal and external assessments of the quality and internal includes engagement supervision, checklists and procedures. So it could be as simple as that, that whoever team is going for audit, they must be following certain checklists, there has to be time to time supervision by seniors and this is how internal quality checks can be done. External quality checks can be done through entire spectrum of audit and consulting work needs to be thoroughly assessed. It should be discussed with the board. So when internal assessment does not seem fit or does not seem uh, you know sufficient, probably some kind of external assessment can also be done through which entire scope of the audit and the consulting can be cross-checked. If there be any uh, incident of biasness or anything which seems like a impairing the independence of auditor needs to be reported with the management. So this is how we have discussed first uh, topic of our CIA part 1 where we talk about independence and objectivity. In my last session I discussed the basic concept of mandatory guidance, uh, what internal audit is all about. So that chapter is very important and this chapter is in continuity of our CIA part 1 exam series. Uh, this is the second topic in the row where we discuss the independence and objectivity. I am your coach Ms. Kavanjit Kurana. Uh, I would like to take this journey forward with my new topics ahead. So far we have discussed two topics. One, the first chapter which is very very important for examination that includes all kind of mandatory guidance, attribute standards how we go about it, what is mandatory, what is recommended. Then we also discuss the concept of IPPF, which is again a very, very important concept. In today's scenario session, we discuss the concept of independence and objectivity and we understood how dual reporting can help with that. So with this, we are done with two chapter of our CIA part one. We shall be discussing more chapters ahead. If you want to contact us, it's our website www.kephedge.com or you can write us at info at the rate online global career.com. Please feel free to be in touch with us and then let's catch up with a new topic. Till then, stay tuned. Thank you so much.